Welcome back, Ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And today we shall be looking at corruption in Jamaica and the fact that a lot of times or politicians, they say one thing uh, or they expect uh, a certain level of comportment by the populace or from the population, but they do often, they do not follow within the rules, the same laws that they have crafted and implemented. A lot of times, I, as I have suggested on many occasions, our politicians act as kings and queens, right? Which they are because we have made them into our sovereigns and we are actually subjects, they're subjects and they treat us as thus. It's time for us to understand it, time for us to recognize that most Jamaicans are enslaved and are living on a grand plantation. Now, you know, we are talking about, and I have spoken about already, the whole matter of the prime minister's refusal. Somebody told me that you use the wrong word, the prime minister has not refused to have his statutory declarations certified. But, you know, who knows what the prime minister is doing or is not doing. People tend to listen to the media and they take the media at their word. It would be nice to take the media at their word because it makes my job easier, right? And I can do further investigation and do them with great facility. The problem is that the media often do not declare the truth as they have actually, you know, uh, deceived many into believing. And it is so sad that day after day, Months after month, year after year, um, we see the media speaking lies, declaring lies, and people still believe in them, right? People still trust the media as the major disseminators of truth, right? Because they think that is what they hear, what they see is what they get. As I have mentioned on this platform, on the show, that what you see is not what you get, and that is time for you to understand this. It's not time for you now to play around and think that what you see is what you get. You've got to understand the system in which all of this corruption is cemented, right? And this is a culture of corruption. Now, I'm going to look briefly at uh, an investigative report that Zara Burton, a uh, Jamaican investigative journalist, did with regard to a lot of our politicians' non-compliance in paying their property taxes. Now, this is just one aspect of our political leader's life, right? What about other areas that we are not privy to, that the Zara Burtons and other journalists have not unpacked to us? But I would like you to look at the responses given to her by our politicians when she actually having investigated and having spoken to the tax office and she's highlighting to them that they have not complied. And by the way, this is not a GLP or PNP problem. This is a political crisis that we're facing in Jamaica, the non-compliance of our politicians in paying their taxes. However, they demand that the citizens of Jamaica pay their taxes. And if they do not pay their taxes, we know the consequences follow particularly property taxes. People have lost their land, right? Their properties because the government, well, they have not paid their taxes and rightly so, the government has allowed the law to run its course. Now, why doesn't the law run its course when it comes on to our politicians? Because they are kings and they are queens and there is no other explanation to describe this really um, hideous phenomenon. But let us look at what, you know, Zara Burton did so that we can get an insightful look into what is happening in modern Jamaica. And this happened in 2016. So it's some years ago, but we know that our politicians really don't change because since then there have not been laws. And in fact, I think, let me see if I can come out of this. I did not have the, I think I came out of the video. Why did I come here now and came out of the video? By the way, as I'm here trying now to find the video to upload the video, I hope that you will like and like the video so the videos can be actually, um, let me see if I can take this out here. Yeah, that so that the videos can be shared. Now on this platform, if the videos are not liked, right, they, are, will, they will not be shared with members on the platform, 
right? This is a business and that is what YouTube has done. It's not about disseminating information anymore. YouTube is just about business and they are not willing to democratize as it were the process of sending out videos. It has to do with likes and subscribes and commentary. Also comment on the videos so that the videos can, the algorithms can dispatch and disseminate the videos to other people. Because if you do not do that, then it's not going to be sent, right? And that is we want as many people to be informed as possible. I'm trying to pull up the video because I lost it. I'm, again, I'm on video and I, <laughs> um, I had it on, on the thing and all of a sudden it's not there. All right, so sometimes some weird things happen when you are online. Let me see if I can pull it up quickly so that you can interact with the video. Uh, let me see if this is it. No, this is not it. So let me get out of here. And so, so we're living in this society in which our politicians are extremely corrupt and they do not practice what they preach. That is something that we have to really, you know, tackle that our politicians often do not practice what they preach, right? They do a lot of talking and they tell us that they are upholders of the law. And when they're not really upholders of the law, they're not upholding the law. They're breaking the law as it were, right? They're stamping their feet on the law and they often, you know, An do so, um, without any form of responsibility or any consequences. All right, so let me now share my screen with you. I'm going to open up this video and, oh boy, what am I doing here? About taxes. Let, okay, let me see. Every dime. Is out the here, okay, let me just get out of here. And. Uh, post account. We are okay. going to go. Dear. All right, okay, so let me share my screen with you now and let us pull up this video so we can learn from what is going on with our politicians, all right? All right, so let me see if I can make the screen bigger so you can see what's going on. Vigorously to try to get those revenues. But what if the country's leaders are behind on their taxes or aren't paying? For why? Because people captured the premises. I go to somebody who was money, man. That's not money. Jamaican sound off on politicians being behind on their property taxes. They don't get their taxes up to date. Police must come for them too. And later, stepping up without being out of step. We don't have any outside investors at the moment, and um, she's not seeking any. The scaling up in size means scaling down in quality. She wants to keep everything in house so she can control the quality. The dilemma facing one Jamaican sandals maker as it makes strides internationally. On this episode of 18 Degrees North. Eighteen degrees north is brought to you by Memories of Trip where the Jamaican Parliament meets weekly. This week, we're looking at politicians and their taxes. During the run-up to the general election, February 25th, 2016, one candidate from the governing People's National Party at the time, J.P. White, he had to step away or was made to step away from the race because of his company being behind on its taxes. We at 18 Degrees North got to thinking, who else was behind on their taxes in the run-up to the general election. What we found was a who to when Jamaican politics listed as behind on their property taxes two weeks before the election, some of them even after. We're staying right here in Kingston at 18 degrees north and 77 degrees west. People's National Party's Patrick Roberts ran for the West Central St. Andrew seat against Jamaica's then opposition leader, Andrew Onis, in the country's recent general election. But the owner of the famed Shocking Vibe studio turned... You know, this is the sort of Jamaica that we live in, and this is the sort of social backwardness that we're seeing 
And you really wonder when will the country move on from this slave-like sort of comportment that we see displayed by our people. But, you know, that is the political life and people will tell you that you have to dance and, you know, you have to sing and you have to gyrate your bodies and, you know, because that is Jamaican culture. And that is how it's going to be. That's how the system is set up. But it's interesting to note that a lot of our politicians are behind and some of them do not pay their taxes. Right. And that is because nobody holds them accountable. The media houses are the people who should be holding them accountable and they're not doing so. Because these are public, well, supposedly are public servants. But as I said to you, they are not public servants anymore. They are kings and they're queens. Because we have made them into being these celebrities as or dance or singers. And we dance and we, you know, gyrate our bodies and we think that, you know, we're enjoying ourselves. Right? But we are enjoying ourselves to our detriment. Because very soon, we're going to understand that the country is going to be sinking under the sea underneath the ocean, and we will not be able to save her from God's retribution, right? His retributive justice. And a lot of times, citizens are complicit in the, the, the acts of corruption that we see displayed by our politicians. We often sometimes blame them and we say they're wicked and they're this and they're that. But if we only know if we were intelligent enough to do our research and not to tether ourselves to a particular party, be they JLP or PNP, right? Then we would be able to say and to call a spade a spade and to speak the truth, though the heavens fall. But what, what I'm seeing, particularly demonstrated through the responses that Jamaican sent to me, you know, on videos that, I, that I've made, they will always say, and most of them say, you are JLP or you are PNP, and we don't like you because you are not defending the interests of my political party. Now, I have critiqued, I have criticized both political parties because I am a political, you know, what should I say now, you know, agnostic. I, I, I do not really vote for any of them, will never vote for them because I understand that they are not really doing, you know, what is best for the Jamaican people. I understand that. So I am not going to be running after any political leader, and I'm not going to treat. I'm not going to treat them as political celebrities as you do. That is why you're clad in your orange and your green, and you're dancing and you're gyrating your bodies because you think that they are there to help you. And Andrew Holmes is a champion. Why? Right? He's a champion boy, and you have to vote for him because if you don't vote for him, the entire Jamaica is going to collapse. Now, that is a slave mindset. And I can't think like that. Politician and one time producer of famous acts like Beanie Man, Lady Saw, and Sean Paul was listed on the tax administration's website in the two weeks before the election as owing for at least seven years on four of his five properties, around 241,000 Jamaican dollars or about 2,000 US. All figures around it. Roberts, a local councillor at first said he didn't remember owning one of the pieces of land, then said his son was responsible for paying the taxes on his shocking vibe studio, but in the end, he said, there's no excuse. You have an obligation, and that obligation must be met. I'll deal with that tomorrow, first thing. When we checked three months later in May, Roberts was still listed as owing. He was defeated by Honus, who became Prime Minister of Jamaica for a second time. And that is the Prime Minister when he won the election in 2016, looking all dapper. Right. And you love it because you just love the the pump and the pageantry. That is all you like. You don't like anything of substance. And, you know, a lot of times you talk to black people in general. They just like to see their politicians in pump and pageantry and this fine style. And they're making these platitudinous speeches. And that is what you think and regard as substance. And you think that these people are working in your interest. Right. And it's entertaining. Right. Nobody's suggesting that when you see them dancing, it is entertaining. It is really, really. Right. Contagious.
and you want to dance and you want to engage yourself in that sort of nonsense. But the fact of the matter is that you, when you wake up out of that sort of stupor, you are going to realize that we are in a Jamaica that is heading on a path, a sure path of destruction, right? But look at what they said about this politician on the PNP side. He said he forgot, but he accepted responsibility. But after three months, upon checking, he still had not paid. And then was there any follow-up by the journalists? And what were the actions? What were the consequences for his refusal to pay his property taxes? And then he's going to blame his son and all of this circular argument because that's what Jamaicans do. And they respond in the same way. They have, you know, a, a structured way of responding. And most of them do respond similarly. Just listen to the video and you'll see how many of the Jamaican politicians respond to their tardiness and their act of delinquency in not, you know, paying their taxes. After his inauguration, Onus erected a super ministry of economic growth to combat years of stagnation in Jamaica. One of his planned initiatives, he told us, was to collect billions of dollars in outstanding taxes. But key members of his economic team were listed as outstanding on their property taxes in the two weeks before the election. Minister of Industry Carl Samuda and Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, Daryl Vaz. We spoke with both at the ceremonial opening of Parliament in April 2016. All of my taxes are, are, are up to date because that is something that I make sure as a legislator. And um, that matter has been rectified. All of my taxes, in terms of property taxes and others, are up to date. I'm surprised it's not covered because a check was sent. But I mean, I'll check it out. But that's yeah. peanuts. It's not, but should... worth, it's not even worth mentioning. Yeah, yeah, it's peanuts, right? It's it's not worth mentioning, right? It's a hundred and seventy four thousand five hundred dollars. It's, it's it's peanuts for him, but what about the people, the man on the street, to whom this is a lot of money that he can do a lot of things with, right? And this gentleman here, who should know better, Samudo, is suggesting that this is peanuts. Now, what about if many of the politicians refuse to pay their taxes and when you add up everything and what it probably could do to buy some chairs or to buy some whatever, to fix a, a small road, a part of a small road, whatever, but it can do something. And even if it's, it's peanuts, the fact of the matter is that that is the law. And if you are insisting that the population do what you, you know, you tell them to do, or what the law indicates that they do, then you have to also follow the law because no politician should be above the law. And I use the, the conditional word should, right? Because we understand that Jamaican politicians are above the law. We have made them, we have allowed them to comport themselves as sovereigns who are above the law. Right, And we are the culpable ones. We should not blame them because we have allowed them. And I'm calling out the media again. The media not doing anything. Right, The media houses are not doing anything because they're also in bed with the financial elites. And the financial elites control the politicians. So their purpose is to entertain you. And you love to be entertained. And from Washington to Kingston, from Kingston to, you know, to wherever, to London, people just love to be entertained. The sports and the, you know, the music of the Hollywood and all of that, you just like to be entertained. So the politicians are giving you what you want, right? They're giving you what you want whilst you are being distracted. They are stealing every red cent from your pocket without your even not knowing because you are in a state of stupor and drunkenness. Right? That's what is happening in modern Jamaica. Not sure it's even modern. Somebody who owes money, man. That's not money. Okay, but what about the idea of property taxes being owed? I think you should pay it, but I paid it. I pay property taxes every year. That's what I mean. How can you ask me a question like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, really, mm -hmm. you know how many problems we have in this country? How dare you 
How dare you, as a representative of the people who is trying to seek information to dis disseminate to the people, how dare you? What audacity do you have of speaking to me like that and holding me to account? Because I am King Samuda. How dare you, right, as a commoner, address me and to hold me accountable for what I did not do? How dare you? Now, look at this man. This is a guy who should have had lots of experience in politics. And when they were in the wilderness, they pretended as if the PNP were the only corrupt people or politicians in Jamaica. And they were so eager to come back to power to set matters right. But were they? Were they? You know, one of the things that is amazing to me is when either the PNP or the JLP, when they go into political in the into the political wilderness, right, they often are supported by the incumbent government and all the corruptions that they are also involved in. So when we believe that they are against each other and they're enemies of each other, they are not enemies. They're protecting each other. Because you never see a JLP coming to power and they're going to hold the PNP, those who are, you know, who are in violation of the laws of Jamaica. They have never exposed them. Or very few have been exposed and nothing really happens to them when they're exposed. They're just doing that as a matter of, you know, fluff and to pretend as if they are going to be um, leaders who are working in the interests of the ordinary Jamaican. Right? But it is really this arrogant behavior to ask her, and she's respectful. It's not like she's trying to be obnoxious, an obnoxious journalist. She's asking him politely, intelligently, why haven't you paid your taxes? Why are you why are you late in paying your taxes? And he's saying, why are you asking me that question? We have other problems and more important issues to talk about. As if the problems that we have in Jamaica are not going to need money to solve them. A lot of the problems we have in Jamaica, yes, some of them have to be solved in order, but it's going to require money. asking me a, a, a very minute um, tax figure on, on a year, last year's tax. That is, uh, there's some matter of the rushing up and down, you'll get around to it. That's a simple matter. Mm -hmm. Days later, the TAJ's website showed the property bars owned with others as paid and Samuda's too as almost all paid up to the 2015-16 tax year. <laughs> Among candidates in the two weeks before the election, Sitting members of parliament at the time, the PNP's Paul Buchanan and Education Minister Ronald Waits, plus GLP candidates Michael Stern and Dr. Norman Dunn, were listed as owing for at least five years on more than one property. Stern said his company was on a payment plan with the tax authorities which he had started. Dunn said his was an oversight and paid part of his amounts. Buchanan said there were ownership issues. He would check into it and was happy for the reminder. Waits, the only one of this lot to win his seat and to have paid in full after we made contact with him and before the election, said we had it wrong. There was no issue. You, che you, you checked the wrong account. No, I think that we had it down. <laughs> let, me, let me encourage you. I spoke to the gentleman okay. uh, and told him, and he was kind enough to, to desist from what he was alleging. Okay, and is it that, are you saying that the information that the tax authorities had at the time was wrong and incorrect? No, I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying that there was no arrears. <laughs> you know, Ronnie Thwait is an interesting character, right? And I'm sure in his Jesuit training and, you know, that's how they operate and that is how they behave, right? That is how the, these Jesuits, the, these people are trained in the art of Jesuitry, or, you know, that is how they behave. Because if information is information, then you, that's information. All he has to say is that I apologize, I did not remember, as some of the other politicians are alleging, even though they're lying, right? But at least, but he's behaving now as if the guy was playing a game. The 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 worker, the employer, the employee, the employee rather, at the talk, the tax office, you know, was actually giving 
wrong information, was disseminating wrong information. And as if the guy was playing a game, I guess because he's PNP and perhaps the guy is GLP. That is what he's intimating. And he's asking the guy or he asked the guy to desist from doing what he is doing. Now, do you think an employee at the tax office would be playing with a person like Ronnie Fuels? In Jamaica, the compliance rate on property taxes is low, around 50%, compared to at least 80% in more developed countries. Do you hear that? In Jamaica, the compliance rates on property taxes is low, lower than what exists in more developed countries that have access to more res economic resources. In Jamaica, it's only 50% that pay their taxes. And you'd be surprised. Yes, we understand that there's some people who are poor and they might not be able to comply and the compliance is low. However, you're talking about lots of wealthy Jamaicans and those, if they're not wealthy, they are able to pay. They have enough resources to pay their taxes, but who refuse to pay their taxes because the laws do not have any teeth in Jamaica. The laws are not properly enforced in Jamaica. Right, because all people like to do is to dance, and they have the you know the guy was there, and they were just dancing and gyrating their bodies, and they think that that is what is the essence of the Jamaican culture. Right now, when are we going to grow up? When are we going to grow up as a people, mentally, physically, socially, culturally? There's about $13 billion or almost 110 million U.S. dollars of arrears in property taxes as of the 2015-2016 tax year, meaning less money for street lights and garbage pickup. Absolutely. Some people get so behind. Just in February 2016, the tax administration had two persons arrested for owing property taxes and published their names. The Ministry of Local Government even put out this public service announcement to get people to pay. We caught up with the head of that ministry, Desmond McKenzie, at the opening of Parliament. He said he would be aggressive on compliance. There is a substantial amount of revenues that is outstanding, especially to the local authorities, that we are going to go there vigorously to try to get those revenues. But then we were curious why he himself was listed as owing for at least three years in the two weeks before the election. I'm not aware of that. I, as far as I know, my property tax payments are up to date, so I'm not aware. Yeah, I'm not aware of that, right? The gunman who has shot somebody and killed a person, an innocent you know, citizen, should not be aware of that or should tell the police that, you know, I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of killing someone, right? How can you not be aware of paying your taxes? And I just say that these guys are very busy, busy doing nothing. Because when you go to Jamaica, you really wonder what they're doing. Um, roads are unkempt, right? The education system is in disarray. The healthcare system is almost not functional. You wonder what these people are busy doing. But they are they have forgotten their taxes because they know that they will not be held accountable. And that is why they don't. Because if they do know that fines would have been applied, they would have paid their taxes. But generally speaking, all human be beings, including myself or, or yourself, we don't comply if we know that we can get away. Many people don't comply with these things if we know that we can get away with not complying. Right, so if on the streets you know you can get away with racing your car through the stoplight, then you're going to do that. But if you know you will not get away, then you will refuse from doing that. Right, because that is how the human being is set up, or evil nature. Right, that is who we are, the deception of our hearts. Right, and then he's telling Jamaicans that he did not remember, or as far as he's concerned, he had paid up all his taxes when he knows that that is not true. And they don't even have the decency to say, let me check to see what is happening and I'll get back to you. They're just 
on record of saying that they know they're all they, you know how could she be asking them when they know that they are up to date because the first time I'm here right. we checked with the tax authorities who told us Mackenzie had paid up in March of 2016 after the elections and soon after being appointed minister already in a climate of belt tightening under the IMF program where every dime is supposed to count civil society activist Carol Narcy says everyone must pay more so those running for office any elected representative that makes policy and regulation that impact your and my life have an obligation to ensure that they are adhering to those regulations and laws. If you wish to be a member of the House of Representatives, you ought to be required to produce to the, I guess, the, the Electoral Commission proof of your tax compliance. Clearly, we are at that point. In our research for just current members of Parliament, there were at least 11 listed as owing for one year in the two weeks before the election at least six for two years, and at least five for three years or more. Some of the most prominent politicians were also listed as the most outstanding, like then Prime Minister and now opposition leader, Portia Simpson-Miller. As it turns out, the tax authorities list this address, she and two others own an old constituency office, as owing 14,000 Jamaican dollars, about 100 US, and being at least seven years behind. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Because people captured the premises. <laughs> <laughs> they, got, they did not yeah. get my permission to move in. I just one day passed the place and I see clothing and everything hung up on the thing. So it was captured. When you say it's captured, though, it's not that much in terms of outstanding. It's only about, let's just say, I think 13,000 days. It's not anything for me to pay. But I thought the constituency office. Where we are now, we're paying it. I didn't know the word paying at all. No. It's nothing for her to pay, right? But I'm sure that it's a lot of money to the ordinary Jamaican, isn't it? Right? So they all say that it's peanuts and, you know, they're sure that this is nothing to pay, right? Because what is 200000 to a politician in Jamaica, right? They're earning lots of money and they have access to state funds, right? So even if they have to use state funds to, to pay their taxes, it's nothing. And who will know? Who will know if they dip their hands into state funds? Because nobody holds them to account because it is a grand plantation, una plantación grande that we have in Jamaica. Right? It is a plantation. And it seems to me that our citizens revel in that plantation. But to when we go back to Samuda and to his, his expression as if he's challenging the journalists and saying, you know, how dare you to be asking me about my personal taxes? How dare you when there are other pressing matters? I am sure if she was talking about the PNP and, you know, a PNP not paying his a delinquent taxpayer from the PNP party, he would have really engaged her. He'd have been happy to have engaged her. And he would begin to say the PNP is corrupt and they're the worst in, in, in the country. Because that is how we play politics in Jamaica. That is how we, the system is set up. That is how the political machinery is designed. Right? And people are sending me messages of telling me about PNP or JLP. These people don't care about you. These people do not care about you. In fact, they find you to be despicable because you are being represented by this journalist. And this is how people like the Samudas and the Ronnie Thwaites and among others respond on both sides of the political aisle. It is not a PNP matter. It's not a JLP problem. It is a political problem. It is a cultural problem that's rooted in corruption, ubiquitous corruption. Now, I'd like to read you something that came from Ian Boy, who addressed 
some you know some years ago before he died you know unfortunately Ian Boyne died because we need some of his commentary which we're not getting anymore from the gleaner right we are not getting anything from the gleaner anymore the gleaner is dead right and we're just you're just there uh wow it seemed to have gone it's gone yeah this is what I don't like about the let me see if I can get out again and see if I could pull back that thing up you know just went mysteriously it's not allowing me to access it you know that is how the system is set up when you're online and these things happen when you want to divulge the truth that is what happens so let me now see if I can go back to it to it and and get this it might not be able I might not be able to to get it Oh, Lord. So let me see if I can put it up again. So hope that you're liking the video, right? Please like. And those of you who have not yet subscribed, please do so right now while I'm trying to pull up the Ian Boyne um, article. Uh, it just did not get it. I might have to not do that one this morning because it seems to me that it's gonna. I'm going to have a problem can't locate the article that I had downloaded from the from the internet. So if I can't find it, I shall end this video. But let me see if I can find it. Right? It's sometimes very difficult to do so. It was under the NIA, that's the the, the National Integrity Association had right. They had put up this article. Yeah. So I'm I found it. So I'm going to see if I can um, read some aspects to you of what Ian Boyd, a very prominent Jamaican journalist who passed away some time ago. Yeah, um, the years are, are are really moving forward, right? Because you know Ian Boyd, I'm sure, died more than probably five years ago. Now, th this was written by Ian Boyd, and the culture of corruption. This is the title of his article: the culture of corruption. In Jamaica, right? It will take more than legislation, enforcement, changing processes, and institutional change to stamp out corruption in Jamaica. We have a culture of corruption. We have to tackle it at its root, right? At its at its root. And that's what I'm trying to do on the show that many people do not understand because they want me to just look at the symptoms of what is happening in Jamaica. But I have to attack all problems at its root, right? That is how I know how to do things. And there is an intimate connection between corruption and every major problem that we face in Jamaica. And there is an intimate connection between corruption and every major problem that we face in Jamaica. Professor Trevor Monroe, a master at making the connection between ideals and everyday reality, does is he, used the occasion of the heavy rains and its effects last weekend to drive home the point that our citizens, and I quote from Professor um, Trevor Monroe, our citizens need to understand more fully that while heavy rains come from the vagaries of nature, aggravated by climate change, exceptionally heavy damage to roads and infrastructure largely reflects the impact of corruption. Not the will of God, but the hand of man of corrupt contractors and public officials. Right? And this is what we did. They like it when they're going around now, um, you know, telling you that they're trying to give you houses and all of that. Right? And the roads are in disrepair because of what happened after Hurricane Beryl. And we're not suggesting here that these storms are not coming from nature and these things will happen even to the best of countries and to those roads which are properly maintained. But we're saying that it is worse when they're not properly maintained. The destruction that it's going to wreak, that these natural disasters wreak up on the nation's infrastructure will be double fold, will be triple fold if they are not properly maintained. And our politicians are so corrupt as we saw in the video that was produced and uploaded by Sarah Burton investigative journalist in Jamaica. But let us continue with some of the thoughts that Ian Boyne has in his, in his then published article. 
The National Integrity Action Executive Director was speaking clearly last week at the Commonwealth Caribbean Association of Integrity Commissions and Anti-Corruption Bodies Conference in Kingston, that they like to have their conferences and their anti-corruption, even when they are a part of the problem, right? They are telling us about corruption as the politicians were having that advertisement that they should pay up their taxes when they themselves are not paying up their taxes, right? That is what we like to say in Jamaica. You know, even when they're disseminating, you know, misinformation and disinformation, they are blaming you and blaming me for disseminating misinformation and disinformation when they are the major disseminators of misinformation and disinformation. He quoted from the Auditor General's December 2015 audit of the National Works Agency, NWA. NWA records revealed that 36 subcontractors submitted all inauthentic test results. Further, between June 2013 and June 2014, the NWA detected 15 instances whereby contractors submitted false quality control test results for material used in road construction and rehabilitation works. The authentic which should have, should have been inauthentic, that's why he had sick there, test results were related to projects with total project cost of 813 million Jamaican dollars, right? The National Security Policy for Jamaica 2013 says, and I quote, the direction of public works contracts into the hands of political affiliates has also been particularly damaging as this has often resulted in unnecessary, expensive, or poor quality infrastructure, right? For example, a contract to build a road might provide an opportunity to reward political affiliates and shoddy construction would ensure that the road surface would crumble, which would then allow the issuing of another contract to resurface the road. And it goes on and on and on without any accountability. And while people, some of these engineers are earning what? Millions of dollars. You know, when you look at some of the communities in Jamaica and I see people on TikTok and on YouTube and they're showcasing Jamaica, these big houses and they look nice, right? On the exterior and the edifices look very great and, you know, quite modern, nice houses, right? Let's give credit where credit is due. However, when you look at the roads of that community leading into the community and also right there where the houses are built, horrible, deplorable roads, deplorable roads. And yet people are spending millions of dollars on these houses to live in what appears to be ghetto communities. Because if your roads are not paved, are properly paved and maintained, it looks, I don't care how big the house is and how many rooms are in that house, how modern the house, the structure of the house is, that is a ghetto. And that is why Jamaica is predominantly a ghetto country. There's no other way to describe it. It is a ghetto country with butters from University of the West Indies right down. And that is why you had the Monty Perkins, even though I disagreed with him at that time. But when you look, as I've gotten older and I look carefully and critically at Jamaica, there's no other way to describe, even the universes that we have there. What intellectual thought are they actually promoting to build Jamaica? Now, this is one of the reasons why Jamaica has simultaneously one of the most dense road networks in the world and one of the worst road networks in the world in terms of the percentage of roads in good condition. Every arena of negativity in the world, Jamaica always stops it. Crime, we're number, we are the top. If not number one, it has to be number three or probably number two. Right? We are at the top of every negativity, negativity in the world. Anything you can think about. Right? We are up there. And Jamaica to the world. So right now, the Olympics, we're going to be dancing for our world athletes. And when they win a few goals, Jamaica, we are Jamaica to the world. Right? We're so patriotic about these inconsequential things. Right? And people must respect us because we got gold and we have the fastest man and the fastest woman in the world. People should respect us for that. Because we have the fastest man, yes, 
to the world that we dance and we behave stupid. And I see people online, oh, I would never like to be born in another country because I'm so proud to be Jamaica. Right? And look at the problems that we have there that we refuse to solve. And then people are telling me that, oh, wow, you're just talking negative about Jamaica. When people drive on the roads in Jamaica, do they not see it for themselves? When they go to the hospitals in Jamaica, do not they not see it for themselves? When they speak to the people on the roads, do they not hear it and see it for themselves? When they drive on the roads in Jamaica, do they not see it for themselves? How backward we are. I don't have to tell people about what is happening in Jamaica. They have their cameras and they travel there. Right? And they have formulated their impressions of our people and of the culture that we call Jamaica or Jamaican. In part due to the practice of preferentially assigning contracts to favored contractors with inadequate oversight. Right? And he goes on. I think you need to read this, this article. Read this article. Right? Listen to what Ian Bourne is saying here. But politics is a major contributor and facilitator to corruption in Jamaica. May I repeat that? Because sometimes you are dumb, you don't understand what I'm tra trying to say, you don't understand that it has nothing to do with PNP or JLP. It is the politics. It is embedded in the political DNA of Jamaica. Corruption. Right? And perhaps we have to talk about the, our African heritage and the Africans are known for that too. Right? Maybe the independence, we need to focus more on some of the negativity, the negative aspects of our African heritage that we're promoting in Jamaica. Politicians created garrisons that proved to be efficient incubators of corruption. When criminals aligned to political parties control communities, corruption is the order of the day. Protection money has to be paid. Meritocracy goes through the window. Entrepreneurship is stifled. Now, this is what I'm going to have to focus on, meritocracy. In today's world, we're talking about the DEI, DEI, right? The diversity and equity and inclusion. And this is what they do. They use the whole concept of DEI to cover, to mask corrupt activities and to mask also the you know the 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 what what should I say now the lack of competency that our politicians should display. So people don't like to hear that some of our a lot of our politicians are really mediocre politicians. But because they participate in actions of corruption, then they are protected. And because they dress well and they make good speeches that are written not by them most of the time, but by written by speech writers, you believe them. And you think, wow, they graduated from X university. So they, you know, they're qualified for the job and they have a master's degree or they have a PhD or they're a doctor or they're a lawyer or they're a pharmacist. And you think that these people are educated and they're sophisticated, but they're hiding beneath the mask of the diversity, equity, and inclusion. And in a fair world, in a normal world, because we're in an abnormal world, they would not have seen the light of day as far as these positions are concerned. Quality service does not have to be rendered and market rules don't play. Quality service does not have to be rendered because guess what? They are DEI, right? And they dress in their jackets and suit, and many people are deceived by what they see and by what they hear. Right? This is what we're talking about. It's it's it, it is sad. It is sad. It is sad. It is sad. He ends the article by saying: so legislation, enforcement, and systemic change, yes. But I remind you of Professor Carstone's salutary statement in 1992, and I quote, the dominance of money as the single most important currency of influence, power, and status has promoted increased and rampant corruption both in government and in the private sector. That culture has to change. 
the dominance of money as the single most important currency of influence, power, and status has promoted increased and rampant corruption both in government and in the private sector, right? Money runs the show. And oftentimes this is not clean money. Sometimes it is money that is deluged in blood, right? With the blood, innocent blood of, of citizens, of your fellow citizens. And your political leaders don't care. They do not care. They will mouth it as if they care because that's what they have to do if they are desirous of getting your votes. So they will tell you that they care about improving your lives and that they are with the International Monetary Fund because, you know, we have to ensure economic, macroeconomic stability. Right? They do not care. When are you going to realize that? When are you going to open up your eyes and say, after all, enough is enough? I must understand that I must respect my political uh, leader because that is his office, but I must challenge him or her and let him or her understand that I am aware of what is happening. I am knowledgeable of what is happening in Jamaica. Because what is happening in Jamaica is just just a it's just too much ignorance. There's just too much illiteracy in Jamaica. Right? People are leaving, a lot of students are leaving schools and even universities. And even universities without having an understanding of the system in which they live. They don't. So we can't even blame only the ignorant man on the street, the one who can't read and write. There are lots of us who can read and write. We can call words, but we do not understand. And we have degrees. We have first degrees and we have second degrees and even up to the, the third degrees. We have we have them. We have all the packages. We have all of the, 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 the telltale signs that we are educated. But are we really educated? We're qualified with degrees, right? But we're not educated. We are not an informed society. And primarily because we don't read, right? We do not read. We have a strong aversion to reading. And then we challenge people who read and we pretend as if we know, right? We pretend, we hide behind, we mask ourselves right behind the that mask that garment but we know when we do not know anything or when we do not have sufficient knowledge because sometimes we do have you know a sprinkling of knowledge here and there but we do not have that in-depth understanding right and the wisdom that comes from above because only from above can we get wisdom do you know that? You can't get wisdom from beneath. You can't get wisdom from Harvard University. You can't get wisdom from Oxford University. You can't get wisdom from the University of the West Indies. You can only get wisdom from God, from above. Right? That's the only source of wisdom. Because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, you have just begun. All of us who are trying to get wisdom from God, we have just begun the process. It is an eternal process because you're talking about an eternal God. Right? But we're living in Jamaica now where everything is superficial because everything that comes from America, we want to emulate. We want to pattern, as it were. We don't want to look at our indigenous culture and apply our wisdom and our knowledge and our understanding in building that culture. We just want some big, some, you know, tall buildings in Kingston. with properly, um, I shouldn't say properly, with, with poorly maintained roads. 
And you see these people in these wonderful cars and they're driving and they're welcome to Jamaica. And they don't even have good roads on which to drive. And the level of lawlessness, let me not talk about that in Jamaica. But how can we be a law-abiding and lawful society when our politicians are also lawless? As we see in the case with these politicians or political leaders who are actually challenging the journalist and letting her know that as far as they're concerned, you know, we forgot, we forgot about it. But so what's the big deal? That's what they were telling her. What is your problem? What is the big deal? We understand that the people that we are representing are slaves. So we don't have to be accountable to them. Right? This is the Jamaica in which you live and the legacy that you are going to leave for your children and your grandchildren. You better believe it. Whether you like to believe it or not, the truth is the truth. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you like and you share and you subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in another video. Please remember to like the video so that they can be sent out. They can be disseminated to the people, other people on the platform. You are responsible for the dissemination of truth. Thank you so much. All the best. Bye.